Welcome to another one of my tutorial videos. This one is looking at meridian flips in SGP. Because I use a paramount, I have to use the SkyX to control it. And you can see that at the moment the mount is coming up to the meridian, which is here. There's a couple of things you need to take care of at the telescope end of things before trying to do meridian flips in SGP. So for instance, on the SkyX, there is a control here which is um, called the flip R angle. And for best results, I always stick it right on the meridian because if you set it too far out, it can create a dead zone and actually stop the flip happening. The way that mounts flip differ from one model to the next. There is a flip command in ASCOM, but some mounts don't implement it. But what typically happens then is that if your position of your mount is tracked round to say here and you issue another slew command to the same position it will automatically flip um, around the other way. So it depends on the mount and SGP tries to find out from your ASCOM driver what type of mount you have, what it can and can't do and issue the right kind of commands. So at the moment I'm tracking um, this object and in SGP it is running a simple sequence which I've set up for the purpose and it's just doing five minute subs and it's going to do about 20 of them. I probably need to extend that and make it 50 so I have enough. So the other thing to notice in SGP at the bottom here is um, there's a little telescope tab here and, and also next to it is a little world tab and this indicates that you're going to automatically flip the telescope and this thing here is the uh, the length of time until it flips. So it's just over an hour. Now in the Sky X these um, broad coloured bands represent the flip area for the mount and these are defined in the settings of the mount and in the case of the Sky X it's here. So I have the mount slew limits, these are soft limits, there's also a hard limit as well and at the moment for the east and west side of the pier, um, it is set to 0.5 hours, which is basically um, every hour is 15 degrees, so it's about 7.5 degrees. So this is a, a number to remember. So I should be flipping SGP before it hits these limits. Otherwise, this mount will just simply stop tracking and it will it'll, it'll stop working in effect. So if I shut that for a second and look in SGP, what I should be checking is the control panel under the telescope tab and then look under auto meridian flip, which is enabled, and then hit the S set button. And you'll see that it's now flipping 20 minutes past the meridian. So this is a time minutes. So in other words, it's about five degrees. So it's flipping before it hits the soft limit on the mount. The other thing just to notice is that um, I've clicked on wait for meridian. So what SGP will attempt to do is take pictures until it calculates that the next exposure will exceed the meridian limit. And what it will do is sit and wait for the meridian limit to be hit without taking exposure, flip it over and then carry on. If you uncheck this, what it will try and do, as soon as it reaches the last possible exposure that won't take you past the limit, it will flip immediately. But I prefer to wait for the, the meridian um, since my maximum exposure time is only 20 minutes and on average I might only lose 10 minutes. But if you flip too early, some mounts um, don't like being flipped uh, so that they are not on the other side of the meridian, for instance. So you, you have to be a little bit cautious there and, and I use this as a, a safety option. The other thing you can do is the pause before meridian flip. So for instance, if you have a load of cabling you've got to move out of the way or you need to alter the balance on the mount because of tracking errors, if you click this, rather than it doing automatically, it'll do a pause command and then you can tell it carry on, everything's cool. And lastly, there's the auto center. So just as at the beginning of a sequence, it will slew and center. I slew and center after the meridian flip so it is to within a few pixels. And again, you can pause before and after the auto center if you need to, to adjust various other things in your system. Remembering that when you flip a mount, 
um, you need to be quite careful that it doesn't hit anything or the cabling is not catching on things and some people like to be around their mounts when they flip and this gives you that opportunity. The other thing at the bottom here is there's a dialog which is closed out in 10 seconds which is fine. So at the moment it's going to close out for a second and I'm going to wait for about an hour and see what happens when it comes up to the time and what SGP does. Okay, while we're waiting for the Meridian flip point to be reached, I thought we'd explore one of the other things that's useful in SGP, and that is the image history. If you drag your mouse across this, you can see the different half flux radius and the star counts for each of the different exposures. And you can see here that something looks like it's gone wrong. Even though the number of stars has gone up, the, the HFR result has, has definitely been skewed up. Well, one of the nice things about this is when that icon is highlighted and you get the little note like pops up with all the data, if you click on it, that image is recalled and brought on the screen. So this is the eighth one in the sequence. If I stretch that one, you can see that actually it appears to be quite good. It's just that it had a plane trail that's skewed the results somewhat. Let's just check it up close. Yep, those stars look round to me. So I might have gone, oh, that's a bad one, but sometimes it helps while the um, history is, is tracking just to say, oh, no, it's, it's OK and I'll keep it. So we've now got 10 minutes to go and we're just coming up to this frame here. So my guess is it'll finish this frame, do the next one, and then it will wait for the meridian flip. So I'll go back on to pause again and come back uh, in a few moments. But just before doing that, I just thought I'd mention one little other little gem, which is in the control panel on the Meridian flip, it's tempting to put zero in this box. My advice is do not put a zero value in because unless you have a real problem with, with the mount hitting something, the actual Meridian is a, a rather sensitive place and different bits of equipment for about half a minute can be confused as to which side the meridian is on. So with all the different time systems in, in the astronomy software and the mount software and so forth, it makes sense just to make this a slightly positive number, say like one minute at, at a minimum. And then there's no chance of ambiguity and a flip command being issued and the mount says, well, I don't need to flip because I've already flipped and so forth. So just that little idea that can save a few problems later on. So let's pause the video and we'll come back when we get to the end of the next exposure. OK, so we're on the last exposure before it flips because it's got five minutes to run on the exposure and only seven minutes before it gets to the flip point. And if we look at the sky X, we can see that we're already past the meridian and we're going to flip around here somewhere well before the, the software limit that's built into the sky X. So if I go back to SGP, and what we'll do is we'll wait for that to complete and just before that I'll start up the video again and we can see what happens. Okay, so we're just coming to the end of the exposure and it'll download it and then we'll see if it does another exposure which exceeds the meridian. So a dialogue pops up which tells me that the next frame length is longer than the time to the meridian flip and I can either override the weight which is in my options and hit attempt flip now I can abort the sequence altogether or let it wait and time out here so I'm going to join this again when it's down to a few seconds okay with just a few seconds to run let's see what happens so it first of all works out where it's going and it's now performing a slew so if I click back to the sky X Running Windows 10 on my remote PC allows me to do 3D uh, graphics. And so you can see the Meridian flip is being performed with my virtual telescope. If I bring that down, you'll see it's coming around the side here. So if I go back to SGP, it's still doing the slew. And then it'll start doing the centering. So it's taking a frame to do plate solving. 
and it's going to solve it and compare it to the target coordinates. So it's 340 pixels off, so it's going to make a tiny micro adjustment and take another 8 second frame, plate solve it and that should be spot on. Now because I haven't got a rotator on this um, camera, the image will be upside down. It's done it, it's centered it within 20 pixels, and it's now restarting the auto guider, which means because it's on an off-axis guider tube, it'll be inverted as well, so it has to find a new guide star. And once it does that, we're good to go. So clicking on PhD2, It's found a guide star and it's now looping and taking more exposures. And when that's settled, the next exposure in the sequence will start. Okay, so that's Meridian Flips and uh, thank you for watching.